I'm Ben Repond. Welcome to my YouTube broadcast. Today is May 24th, 2023. We'll cover the uh, market. I'm going to begin with my dashboards to kind of give you a sense for the market. Very interesting market because there are leaders in the market and the rest of the market is basically struggling, uh, maybe even struggling to negative. And uh, so this chart does a good job of explaining that. So the top two lines are two, excuse me, two indexes, uh, the NASDAQ 100 and the developed markets. The pink box going vertical uh, explains that th this is the rate of return for those indexes going from the highest to the lowest um, from year to date. The yellow box is the last week. Generally speaking, this last week was more positive than negative. And to the far right are the uh, green dots that indicate if those indexes are above or below their 20, 50, 100, and 200 day moving averages going from left to right. And you can see that quite a few are green. Uh, this is more positive for this past week. Uh, so we've got going from top to bottom, NASDAQ 100, uh, the developed market, CFA, and then the S&P 500. That gets you down to from 26%, 12%, 9%. After that, it drops down to 2, 1, and then less than 1 and less than 1. So very two very different kinds of markets. So the um, below the S&P 500, on the fourth one is the developing markets, EEM, 20-year uh, long-term government bonds, TLT. IWM is the Russell 2000 Small Cap Index Fund. And then the Dow Industrials is on the bottom and um, DIA. When we take the S&P 500 and break it apart into its 11 sectors, you see kind of the same thing. This is so interesting, but even more so. You see the top two are technology and consumer discretionary. They are doing very well since the beginning of the year. By the way, they were the two that were the worst last year. So now they moved up to number one. After that, you can see the other sectors, consumer staples, industrials, basic materials, retail, uh, real estate, healthcare, et cetera, going on down from the beginning of the year, again, up 1%, 1%, 1%, and then negative 1, 1, 3, all the way down to negative 8.9% uh, for uh, energy. So the broader market is not participating in these gains. They, they are very concentrated in technology and consumer discretionary. And this data is of last Friday. I said that last week was a um, positive week. And this is the chart of the S&P 500 for the last 18 months. Uh, and I draw a line, a black arrow showing from kind of the bottom in October all the way up to where it is now. So you can see the most recent move up at the far right uh, that shows that the gain that occurred with the S&P um, during this last week. Uh, so it goes up and down, but the general direction is positive. An 18 month chart also, this is interesting, uh, shows this is a value, a relative strength chart showing value and growth. If it goes up, that favors growth if it goes down, it favors value. Two different kinds of stocks, both within the S&P 500. So from the beginning of 2023, I drew an arrow to today, and you can see that it, generally speaking, has been favoring growth. And what's been interesting is that for some time, we have been in growth ourselves for our clients. Uh, we've been in the growth index and in NASDAQ 100 for some time, and it is way outperforming 
the um, value index, which is the Dow. So we've made a couple of moves this year, both uh, in the market, out of the market, initially in value and now in growth. So it's it changes, but uh, we're getting the excellent uh, results out of the um, growth index for right now. And it does go up and down, so this is not going to last. So um, you can do the, this however you want, but we, the way we do it is when it pivots, we pivot. When we, another relative strength chart showing the um, S&P 500 and the small cap index, uh, IWM, the Russell 2000. And this shows since uh, March how the degree to which large cap is in favor over small cap. Large cap representing the S&P 500, you saw that in the previous chart. It has not done something like this. It's because the, the small cap index, the Russell 2000, has done so poorly that it, on a relative strength basis, it shows that um, the large cap is significantly outperforming small cap. I mentioned this last week. I told you I thought this was the, the, the long-term government bond came down a lot, about 30% last year. Uh, and then, then it went up uh, toward the end of the year. And then uh, it's generally kind of gone sideways since that time. My comment last week was, I think this looks like it's going to probably go on down some more before it goes back up. So, and that's exactly what happened here, um, is it was a down week for the, for the um, long-term government bond. Uh, I, again, I, I still think it's got, it's got some weakness in it and it's probably um, gonna go down some more before it goes back up. Uh, not a, and that's indication that interest rates and bond yields are going up because the price of the bond is coming down. They go in an inverse relationship. 24 month chart of the dollar. So the dollar generally speaking since last October has declined. However, you can see a couple of times, including the last couple of weeks where it has uh, tried to go back up. But the general direction from October to present is in a downward direction. Gold, gold continues to go in a generally speaking upward direction. There was a pullback last week and you can see that at the far right of the chart. But since uh, November, um, definitely strength in precious metals and in gold in particular. So silver, somewhat the same way, uh, going in an upward direction, but more volatile than gold. Uh, and uh, it's, it's gone down, it's gone up more dramatically and down more dramatically, but in general, generally speaking, it's going in an upward direction. When I put the two on a relative strength chart, and if it goes up, that favors silver. If it goes down, it favors gold. So still going in an upward direction, meaning it's generally favoring silver, but with a lot of volatility. This magnifies the volatility when I put it on a relative strength chart. But... Um, Generally speaking, both of them are going in an upward direction. Bitcoin uh, has uh, gone up since the beginning of 2023, actually since about November, but uh, we got into our Bitcoin model, I think on the 10th of January, and uh, it's, been, it's been volatile. Uh, we've been out of the market some, and uh, in some and out some. So right now it, we're out and it's been in a pullback and um, but I think it's generally in a going in an upward direction from its low in uh, probably November or even the beginning of the year. And the volatility index, this uh, if there is more volatility in the market, meaning generally stocks are going down when volatility goes up, it kind of goes in an opposite direction from the stock market. So stock market goes up, this relaxes and comes down. That's what has been happening. So it's come in a downward direction, as you can see from the way um, stocks have been behaving. And um, gone, it's gone up some, but generally speaking, it's uh, showing lower volatility in the market. I put a black line there to show my um, artificial mark 
that if it's below 24, uh, particularly moving down and below 24, that is positive for the market. Asbury Research, um, I'm going to show you some chart, some data from them. They are generally positive. They have uh, six indicators on the Asbury 6. Four of them are positive, two are negative. What's interesting to me, the one that's negative, one of them that's negative is market breadth. The other one is trading volume. So trading volume is more negative and breadth is more negative. And what that means is to me that the, um, and we saw this in the earlier data, that the gains are occurring in a very small segment of the market, but the broad market is not participating in those gains. Uh, so it's not a surprise that both the trading volume and the market breadth are negative. Cross asset relative performance, comparing one asset to another, relative strength, if you will. So which is stronger, stocks or bonds? Stocks. Which is stronger, high beta or low volatility? High beta is stronger. That would be things like uh, technology, and we saw that in the earlier data. Um, large cap or small cap? We saw that in the data. Large cap is stronger. Um, broad market, meaning the S&P 500, or the Dow, the blue chips, and the S&P 500, which includes consumer discretionary and technology, uh, is, of course, stronger than the uh, blue chips. And technology is stronger than the S&P 500. Growth is stronger than value. We saw that. And the U.S. is stronger than both the developed markets and the emerging markets. High yield bonds are stronger than uh, corporate bonds, high quality bonds, and short term is more favorable than a uh, long term bond. U.S. versus the world, there is not a single country, U.S. or any other country, that is strong enough to get a green box for the last week, month, and year, particularly for the last week. What that tells you is, if you look at these on charts, it would be they are kind of going sideways. They're not, no, no one, the U.S. or any of these other countries is showing that much strength. So uh, you can see a little bit, but as I went through, even the ones that are indicated here, um, on a relative strength chart, not, it's not showing a, a general direction that's uh, convincing. Okay, gold and silver. Uh, as of last week, as of last Friday, uh, gold is down 1.6%. We saw that on the uh, gold chart. And silver is down a half of a percent uh, from the previous week. The 1984 is a spot price of gold and silver 2401. The gold silver ratio remains unchanged from where it was last week. Uh, it's still at 83 to 1, which favors silver. The, um, <clears throat> my son Preston gives me this information. Uh, so, as of, uh, so what, what he sells this for. The monster box of silver bullion uh, is 14,170. That's 500 uh, ounces of um, generic silver. And that includes a $4.33 per ounce markup over spot. And so for a round out of a monster box, out of a 500 rounds, uh, that would mean the average uh, price of a round is twenty-eight thirty-four, and if it were in a sleeve, one of those um, tubes, uh, that would be an increase in price of fifty cents per ounce uh, for twenty of them, uh, twenty-eight dollars and eighty-four cents. So that is down slightly, slightly, barely from the previous week. Thinking of a bull market, 
And when exactly did these voices start telling you that you're immortal? Thank you for watching. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below.